In this video, I'm going to create the model for the ground. Now, in this demo, I'm going to use Maya, but you can use any 3D program. All the techniques will work in any program that you want to use. The important thing to understand is that for your 3D program, you need to know what the internal measurement system is, because you're going to need to be able to convert that so that it'll work inside of Unity. Now, in the previous video, we talked about Unity is using one unit is equal to one meter. Well, with Maya, internally, it's one unit is equal to one centimeter. So we have this scale difference of 100 between Maya and Unity. And since I know that, it makes it really easy for me to just adjust the scale factor in the FBX file when I import that into Unity. So for example, if I come over here to my grid options, you'll notice I have a length and a width, and I've set this to be 50 units. This means it's going to place 50 units on the positive and 50 units on the negative of each axis. Now this unit system is just relative to whatever you want it to be. So like we said, we know what we're gonna be working with in Unity, so here in Maya, I can just think of this as one unit is equal to one meter. And as long as I build all of the objects relative to each other in terms of scale, again, when I import this into Unity and I adjust the scale factor appropriately, everything is just gonna match up. So if we jump over to Unity, you can see that I have my ground plane here and I've added a new distance tool just to measure the entire width here of the ground and you can see that it's at 100 units. So back to Maya, that is why I have a length and width of 50 units. So this is 50 and 50, that's gonna give me 100. So now that I have this grid, I can start to build the ground sections. So let's start by creating a polygon plane. And so here I have this polygon plane and I'm gonna adjust my scale. So again, notice everything is set to one and I need to scale this up. So what I wanna do is make sure that I have five sections. And so if the entire ground needs to take up 100 units, I know that for each section, I need to put the scale at 20 because 20 times five is gonna give me 100. So let's adjust our scale here to 20 and this gives me the size of my ground plane. Now, if I want, I can start to adjust my subdivision width and height. And I think I'm actually just going to leave this at the subdivisions of uh, 10 on the width and 10 on the height. So let's position this ground plane. So first, I'm just going to set my pivot point just to make it easy for me to, just to snap objects on the grid. So I'm gonna hold down the D key and I'm gonna come over here to this vertice and I'm just gonna left click to align the orientation here for this pivot. Now, I can just hold down the X key and I can snap to the grid. So let's just snap all the way over here to uh, this corner area here of my grid. So now that I have this in place, I'd like to take this section here and just duplicate it so that I have five sections. So here, I'm just gonna hit Control D and on the X axis, I'm gonna move this over. Now I can actually hold down the V key to go into vertex snap mode and I'm just gonna snap it here to the vertice of the previous plane. So now that I have this in place, I can utilize this duplicate with transform option here. And so with this, I'm just gonna hold down or I'm gonna hit Shift D. So now I have three, let's do this one more time, four, five. So here I was able to quickly create my five sections. And so now I need to do this again here for the length. So in this case, I'll just select all of the sections that I have. I'm gonna hit Control D to duplicate them. I'm going to single left click here on my Z axis so that I can constrain my snapping to this single axis. And now, again, I'll hold down the V key here and I'll just snap to the vertex. And I'm just going to make sure that I snap this right here so that it fits nicely against the previous section. So now that we have this in place, let's utilize the duplicate with transform option, so Shift D, and we'll just fill out this entire grid. So here we have our ground plane that we wanna work with. So here I'll turn off the grid and so now we have this plane area that will relatively match the unit scale once we bring this into Unity. So here I'm just gonna turn on the wireframe on shaded mode so that we can just see the subdivision sections. And let's just talk about UVs now. So here I'm just gonna open up the UV texture editor and we'll bring this into view and I'm just gonna select one of these sections here. And so with one of these sections selected, you can see that the UVs are fitting or are normalized so that they fill the zero to one. And you can notice here that the UVs are right on the edge. And this is exactly how I want the UVs to be laid out because remember, we're going to apply our substance material and we're going to tile this. So in order to get a seamless tile, we need to make sure that our UVs are fitting precisely right here on the edges of our zero to one space. 
So currently we have this ground plane, but you know, it's extremely flat. And I would like to add some variation to this. So one of the things I'm going to do here is select all of these planes here. And for now, I'm going to combine these into one object. So here in Maya, I can do that by just using the combine option. Now I'm using history here, so I'm just going to delete my history at this stage. So now I have basically one object, and if I go into face mode, you can see that it's actually made up of all these different polygon shells. And so with this, I can now come in and I can start to utilize some sculpting tools. So here inside of Maya, I have some sculpting tools, and I'm actually just going to go in and just sculpt a few mounds and just some variation here to the surface. Now, if you have a 3D program that doesn't have any sculpting tools, you could actually just come in and just select, you know, some vertices here and just move these guys and just make some changes here. Maybe apply some fall off to the selection. And again, just add some variation here to the surface. So that's what I'm going to do here with the polygon tools. So here we'll just turn off that wireframe on shaded. Let's come over here to the sculpting tools. And now I can just start to sculpt some value here. Now, let me show you a problem that we're going to have. So as I start to kind of sculpt on this, you notice that, you know, I did merge the objects together, but at the seams, they are not welded. So as I start to sculpt over this, we're going to start to get this kind of problem here. And that's not going to give us a very clean result. So here, I'm just going to undo this and for a trick, what I'm going to do is just come into my uh, vertex mode here, and I'm just going to select all of these vertices, and then I'm just going to merge them together. And so now we'll just go back into uh, our sculpting tool here, and let me just uh, increase my brush here. And now I can start to just sculpt, increase the um, intensity here so we can see this. Now I can start to sculpt, and we don't get that seam anymore. Now, before I actually start to sculpt any variation, I would like to import in the vehicle and place that here into the scene so that I can actually utilize that as a guide when I'm kind of sculpting some detail. Let me jump over to Unity and show you what I mean. So here in Unity in our scene, you can see that I have this object here that's a placeholder for this vehicle. And the character is going to be standing probably around in this area. And so what I would like to do is have it to where, you know, this vehicle has basically been covered into this ground a bit. So I may want to just create some mounds here. And so I need to import in the vehicle so that I can see how I can sculpt around this vehicle here inside of Maya. So let's import this vehicle. So here I'm going to come over to the outliner and here's our plane. Let's just go ahead and just hide the plane for now. And I'm going to re-enable uh, my grid. And then we're going to go to file import. And here I'm going to go to the tutorial directory and inside the meshes directory, you'll see this vehicle low FBX. Let's import this. So we're going to import in the vehicle. And so here we have the vehicle in the scene. So you'll notice the vehicle size is not correct. So let's go ahead and just resize this now. So I'm going to jump over to Unity and take a look at what I set up for the measurement. So here in Unity, you'll see that for a length here, I have 22 units. Let's grab the distance tool here. I'm going to hold down the V key. I'm going to snap it uh, to this corner. So we're looking at 22 units by 10 units. So let's jump back to Maya and adjust our scale. So here in Maya, I'm just going to come over to the create menu and measure tools and grab the distance tool here. And I'm just going to just create uh, my distance tool just so I can measure uh, what I'm going to be working with. And so here, uh, let me just set this up. So we'll grab hold of this locator here. And I'm just going to snap it to the grid. And so here we're at 16 units. And uh, I think we said we wanted this to be about 22 units. So now I'm going to grab this vehicle here. And I'm just going to scale this so that it fits within this range here. So I just might move to my top view. And let's see what we have. So here we'll just move this guy. And again, we're just adjusting the scale. And so here you can see that you know it fits you know pretty close within this range here. So here we got the vehicle. Uh, let's see what it looks like. It's fitting in between those two locators, so we're close enough here for that 22 unit measurement. And so here we have our actual vehicle, and it's been scaled appropriately. Uh, here you can see that I've adjusted the scale. What I'm going to do is just freeze the transform on this, so I can go to Modify, Freeze Transformations. And now I'm going to go back to my plane, and I'm going to unhide this. If I come over to uh, the plane and I'm going to turn my wireframe on shaded back on, you can notice that, well, I no longer see, since I've merged all those sections together, I no longer see these guys as uh, sections. 
So one of the things I can do with this is I'm going to select this polygon here and I'm going to turn on an option for my display uh, called my uh, toggle texture border edges. And so when I do that, I can actually see the UV border edges here. And that's going to allow me to take this vehicle and place it here. Let's go into our top view here and I can place it into a specific quadrant. So here I'm just going to rotate my vehicle, just kind of use this as a guide here to kind of place it here within a quadrant. So I might say, let's just take these four sections here and say that this is where we're actually going to place our vehicle. So now I'm going to start adding some variation here to this ground plane. And I'm going to start by using a little trick. So here I can use a texture deformer. So here underneath my deformers, uh, we have this option for texture. So let's just add this, and here I need to add a texture or a height map. And so I'm just going to browse to a texture that I have. Now this here is a height map. This is just the height map that I exported from Substance Designer of our ground rocks uh, with the actual puddles. So here I'm just going to utilize this guy. And so you can see that it starts to uh, displace. And let's go back to our options here and start to just adjust perhaps our strength. You can start to see the UV borders. And we're going to have a little bit of a problem with this, but um, it's more of a display issue here. So you'll notice if I come over here to my sculpting and I enable my sculpting tool and the viewport just kind of gets refreshed and, and now it's not really giving me much of, an, of a problem here. Since we don't have continuous edges here for all these different sections, we will have a little bit of a problem with that. But as you'll see, once we start to add our substance in, you won't really be able to notice it. So now that I have this in place, I'm just kind of using this as just um, you know a, a basic displacement. I'm now going to use the sculpt tool to go in and just kind of sculpt around and just make some uh, additional variations. Now if you don't have a, a sculpture tool you can actually just you know select vertices maybe apply a selection fall off and just kind of push and pull the verts around just to get some variation here in the ground. So now I need to go back and break this uh, ground plane back into its ground sections. So first, let's select our ground plane. Let's go over here to our UV texture editor. So all of our UVs are still discontinuous for each one of those polygon shells. Now, before I start to extract these shells, what I'm going to do is just go into UV mode and I'm going to select all of the internal UVs and I'm going to do an unfold to relax the UVs. And so here you can see that I've just unfolded the UVs and that's going to help with any texture distortion uh, that we've introduced through this displacement kind of sculpting operations here on the vertices. So now that we have this in place, uh, we can go back out and what I'm going to do is just go in here and I'm going to select by UV shell and now I can just select the UV shell and then I can just run the extract faces command. And so here when I do this, you'll see that I now get my shell. And so now I'm just going to run back through the ground plane here and I'm just going to continue this operation until I've extracted all of the ground sections. So now we have all of our ground sections. I am going to assign a new material, so a Lambert, and here I'll just call this ground underscore mat. Now in chapter one I talked about exporting materials from your 3D program. You need to make sure that your color value is set to full white. Now you can actually change this uh, once you're inside Unity in the standard shader, but it's good just to go ahead and do it now. That way we don't miss anything later on. So here's our ground mat. We're going to switch this here to a full white color. In this particular case, we're going to replace this material with a substance material. So this isn't really vital, but I just get into the habit of doing this for all assets that I export. So now that I have this together, uh, we, got our, we have our ground, and let's export this as an FBX. So we'll export selection. I'm going to uh, name this ground, 
And for the export options, make sure that smoothing groups is enabled and triangulate. This is all we need and we'll export the selection. And now we'll use this mesh when we actually build the scene in Unity.